he followed out. <laughs> the best present I ever got was given to me in seventh grade for Hanukkah from my friend Roseanne McFarland, and it probably cost all of five dollars. It was a tiered plastic tray of Revlon makeup, two discs of blush, six rectangles of eyeshadow, a blush brush, and two tiny plastic and foam paddles for the eyeshadow. It was the first makeup I'd ever owned. More than that, it was quite possibly the first makeup that had ever been in our house in suburban Connecticut. My mother did not wear makeup, not any makeup ever. She did not own a single pair of high heels. She rarely wore dresses or skirts. She spent and still spends her days in elastic waist cropped cotton pants, Birkenstock style sandals, and loose tunics and t-shirts in stripes and primary colors. <laughs> On a good day, the pants will be pinkish and the shirt will be white-er. <laughs> On a bad day, the pants are bright red and the shirt is yellow. You look like ketchup and mustard, my older daughter will say, and my mom will laugh and agree and head bare-faced, wet-haired, out the door. In retrospect, maybe we shouldn't have been too surprised when my mother announced at the age of 54 that she'd fallen in love with a woman, with a woman named Karen, <laughs> who she met in the swimming pool of the West Hartford JCC. <laughs> Although, in our defense, it's sometimes very hard to distinguish between the non-lipstick lesbians and New Englanders. <laughs> four-wheel drive Subarus, and L.L. Bean anoraks cross over. I, I don't know how you guys all spend your holidays, but in my family, it's sort of you eat the meal, you do the dishes, and then you gather in the living room to play the game of, Mom, when did you know? She's like, oh, I don't want to talk about that. Oh, come on, Fran, when did you know? Did you always? You know, and whenever she tells me I'm turning into her, like when we go on vacation and we each reach into our purse and pull out the exact same wallet that we've bought 300 miles apart at different marshals. <laughs> and she says, you're turning into me. <laughs> and I say, when do the urges come? <laughs> My mother's lack of interest in all things fashion related extended to her four children. Not only did she not care about her clothes, she wasn't particularly interested in ours either, as long as they were seasonally appropriate and not visibly dirty or ripped. She was not the kind of mother who delighted in dressing up her daughters in frills and pink and be ribboned French braids. <coughs> My sister and I wore our hair yoinked back in no-nonsense <coughs> ponytails, and all four of us wore clothing from the clearance rack of Marshalls and TJ Maxx. This will fit someone, my mother would mutter, <laughs> grabbing clothing by the handful and tossing it into the cart. One unfortunate year, Marshalls had a sale on long sleeve t-shirts with a letter on front. And the letter was meant, I think, to stand for the kid's first name, and Marshalls had made a bulk buy of the shirts with letters that no one wanted. <laughs> my mom came home from her shopping trip and presented my brother Joe with a shirt with a G on front. <laughs> G, said Joe who was six at the time. It starts with J, right? <laughs> it's G for great kid, <laughs> said my mother undeterred. And poor Joe wore that shirt for an entire school year. <laughs> Needless to say, I was not a girl who grew up tottering around in mom's heels with bright circles of rouge on her cheeks practicing at beauty. By the time I was old enough to notice, I was already doing it all wrong. I made it my project to identify the things the other girls carried, the brands they wore, the bags they had, and try to get them and hope that it would help them fit in. I begged and pleaded and saved my own money to buy a pair of tree-torn sneakers with the pink mm -hmm. triangle. In spite of my mother's shrugs and insistence that they were really no better or no different than the sneakers from Marshalls. It took me way, way longer than it should have to figure out clothes and hair and makeup to learn that eyebrows could be plucked and concealer was your friend and you weren't necessarily stuck with the hair color or texture you'd been born with. And that I could always outsource. If I couldn't do a perfect smoky eye or get my hair to behave or find a dress that fit and flattered, I could pay people to do these things for me. Now I was doing okay. Then I had daughters. With my first one, blonde haired blue eyed Lucy, I vowed that she would have every advantage that I was denied, every beautiful dress and sparkly sandal a girl could ever want. <coughs> the problem 
was, once she passed her brief infatuation with all things Disney princess, Lucy didn't want any of it. She is her grandmother's child and dresses like she's in a 1980s aerobics video. <laughs> <laughs> all pants must be black, gray, or navy blue with an elastic waist and no itchy tags. <laughs> Shirts must be 100% cotton, similar, similarly tag-free, in shades ranging from gray to black, although sometimes she'll go crazy and wear purple. <laughs> Getting Lucy to take her gorgeous curls out of her true grit braids, that's the part down the center of braid, braid, and put on a dress for high holidays requires a combination of threats and persuasion that would have impressed Torquemada. <laughs> Lucy goes to hippie progressive school, and the very notion of the quote unquote right brand of jeans or type of sneakers perplexes her. Why would anyone like me because of what I'm wearing, she'll wonder. Then came Phoebe, whose first word was mama, and whose first sentence was click add to cart. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe loves to shop. She lives in pink and purple, in skirts and dresses, and hair bows and headbands, and what she proudly calls her teenager shoes, a pair of pink patent leather Mary Jane that I, could, that I bought for Lucy but could never convince her to wear. Phoebe cares about her look. And alas, mine too. <laughs> the other day she plucked my highest pair of heels from my closet and put them down on the floor. Thinking she was planning on trying them on, I said, Phoebes, what are you doing there? She said, I will bring these shoes when I go to be on The Bachelor. <laughs> I know what she's thinking. What's the big deal? Can't you suffer a little to be beautiful? <laughs> and God help me, she found my author photo once. She looked at the picture. She looked at me. She looked at the picture. <laughs> she looked at me. You are wearing makeup in this picture, she said accusingly. That's right, I said I am. She looked at the picture, looked at me. You need to wear makeup all the time! <laughs> God is laughing. God knows my mother is. <laughs>